Okay, so I've got the bantamweight champ. He said he was the best bantamweight in the world. He went out occasionally with some absolutely, he, he, with a fantastic performance. He said he was going to do it. He's been saying it for a long time. He's had doubters, but um, he done it. How did it feel to win that belt, especially in the hostile crowd? Uh, best experience of my life. Uh, the whole, just everything about, even the camp leading up to it, like it was so, uh, just like, it was almost like a relief when you win it because there was so, so much, like in the training was, actually about, I was documentary coming out here now, but the whole camp coming up to it, and then the fight, then a uh, wee interview after, they like, kind of getting in lo- or an insight like what the camp was like. It was insane, and obviously the title alone, but that was like Cage Wars was a like, goal for like ten years, so it was probably just more relief to get over the line more than anything. But uh, no, an unbelievable experience. Like the week of being in Rome with my team. The fight itself was a fucking absolute scrap. And then I took like 80 odd people over to Rome. So then I had like three days in Rome after. So it's like the best experience of my life, lad. It was, I'll never forget. It was unbelievable. It was, it was very good. And like that going into hostile territory, does that motivate you more? Or would you have liked it to be on one of the, the Irish cards, like the Dublin card? Or, or did you like, did, did it mean more going over and silence in the crowd? Ah, uh, just way better, lad. See, like, just like the novelty of flying to Rome was like so cool. I just felt like literally, literally just live, live in the dream. And then like the next day was me and all my mates and we were in Rome on the rip with the bell. Like it was special. That was a class experience. Obviously like Dublin would be good or would have been good and stuff. But uh, no, it's like uh, Rome will always be special to me now for the rest, rest of my life. I, I, uh, I'm glad it was away. Also glad I had my own show to be main event and just the uh, everything comes with that too. But now it was, it was just a, a crazy time. Like, it was unbelievable. Yeah, no, it was a fantastic fun. I can't remember what show was on. We were at a show and I remember we were all looking at our phones and everyone was sharing it to each other when it happened. Um, I think there was a, there was like a home show and we were all like, right, when's he fighting? When's he fighting? When's he fighting? And then yeah. we were just getting around or you see people running around the cage. But you mentioned the documentary there. Um, yeah. I obviously, you know what I do on the Irish scene. I I'm involved with a lot of the amateurs and and some of yeah, the yeah. pros. So I kind of see what you go through on a day to day basis. Um, do you think like this documentary is coming out? This doc gonna document the camp. Do you think a lot of people they yeah. see the fifteen minutes or, or well, you don't can't go past two rounds usually anyway. So, uh, <laughs> um, do you think they they see that the performance on the night? But like. Obviously, you and your opponent both went in there to win, and and like obviously his yeah. training camp was going to be grueling. Do you want to give people an insight to that? Is that what the documentary is about, or can you t- expand more on it? Obviously, if you can, if you can't, it's okay. No, absolutely. Uh, I, I thought it would have been out by now. It was th- it's actually two lads from Belfast, uh, who studied over here media, and it was just for their dissertation, so they were in as much as they could. Uh, I think people, I think a lot of people will get a an ash, a, a bit of a shock. As to how hard I actually train, how hard Colin Hearn's sessions are. I actually think people watching will probably want to come give us gym, not just to move, but like to come to give it a go for a week or two. It's uh, it'll be eye opening. Some of the sessions were fucking insane. Like I feel like if you're preparing for like an elite level tie boxer, say you're fighting like a rod tying national, the fight will be very sore on you, very physically sore. You're looking at the bruised leg, a fucking broken rib, a broken face, whatever. But the training camp for an elite level wrestler like Dylan was, and how much I respected him going in, meant that I, a lot of rounds are like, well, obviously I'm very lucky to be surrounded by li- literally elite level wrestlers from obviously Mike, his son Jack, and there's a lot of Iranians in the UK that have a good affiliation with our gym, boys you represent their own. So a lot of like the rounds would have been worst case scenario and then fade out fight out of them situations just day in day out new boys coming in so I think people actually will be people who think fighters who think they train hard will be surprised how hard I train <laughs> so I, I can't wait that. and obviously with like you come across as quite brash let's say but I think it's more confidence and the confidence comes from yeah, obviously, yeah. obviously the training because like that you showed your opponents respect in the past Um, yeah, yeah. where does your confidence come, confidence come from is it that training that you do Absolutely, training comes from from our comes from my training. Um, 
every time, like I, I fucking like see when I train, spar bantamweights. Like, like I went to travel stuff for the last. I fought some, went to spar some big names around the UK, and every single time I spar bantamweight, like I just take more confidence. Like they feel, they feel like children every time. Every time we get a grip them, every time they spar after, they always like. Uh, they always, I always get the same reaction. We get the same. They always say the same things to me, and it's uh, until you're in front of me, until you feel my pressure, you won't have felt it about me. I, I always feel it, and I, and I always, uh, it's the mo- I, I can always tell when I'm breaking a guy, and my conf- my confidence just comes from this. I do this time and time and time and time and time and time again in the gym, and uh, that's where my confidence comes from. I, I had trained with over COVID. I had been training with some big UK names to come into our gym. Because obviously, like we had Till fighting and Fight Island and Grundy and Tom Aspinall, so we had this like fucking elite athlete bullshit. I don't know what the fuck it was. So a lot of big guys in the UK, Bellator, Cage Wars champion stuff would come up to our gym and train, and I couldn't get a fight. But these were basically my fight days. These guys were coming in, these big bantamweights, featherweights, and lightweights, and I left COVID. One, well, obviously, I had no competition. I couldn't compete, and that's probably what people say. I was like a fucking shit talker because I wasn't actually going out and backing it up. But I left COVID absolutely fucking wired to the like to the head. Like I knew it was, I was just itching to fight, itching to get signed with a big promotion, just chomping at the bit to compete. But just uber, uber, uber confident that as soon as it, as soon as I got the call from Cage or something, that I was going to go, I was going to go through through them. I knew it was going to go through because I'd seen myself against these guys, like these big names. I knew it was going to go through through Cage Wars division. I had no doubt about it. So confidence absolutely comes from the gym. No, every single person who comes to Cowboy gets eye, their eye open about how hard we train. I did every one of those, the rounds we do, the intensity which we set that we train at. There's no fucking about in Colin Hearns' classes. No fucking about. There's no standing around having a conversation. There's no taking go a sip of water. It's from the moment he says go, it is balls to the fucking wall until the session ends. It's it's next level training. So, absolutely, my, tra- my confidence comes from my preparation. Absolutely. You know, and it sounds like COVID, a lot of people, a lot of fighters, it sounds like over COVID, a lot of it done what you've done and used it to improve and upskill and upskill. And a lot of fighters said, maybe yeah. I go because like that, there was no competitions, shows were being yeah. cancelled. Um, and obviously you made the most of it, but obviously with your move over to Liverpool, do you want to talk about that? Like you've uprooted your life to go there for MMA and, and what made you make that decision and why that gym? Yeah, well, I mean, the, the gym, like we've been the most cage or USC fighters, sorry, of any gym in this part of the world, I think we're at 10, all of which has went from amateur to pro. Like the most recent ones were Grundy, Till and Asp and Tom. They all have their amateur debut on their con, which is quite rare. Um, it's un- unbelievable, really unbelievable. Start that. Uh, I had I was fighting through the amateur. I'd obviously won the Cage Legacy title and the uh, Clan Wars title, and then I went and represented Ireland in like a Cage Warriors like European series, and I lost to Nathan Fletcher at the time, and that night Darren Hill was fighting Tyron Woodley which is obviously the biggest night in Cowboys history. They're fighting for a UFC world title. And they're in Dallas time. And a couple of days after, when the video came out, Ali McLean from Belfast, Irish MMA legend, does a lot of grappling over here. He uh, he messaged me and said, basically, there's like a, a technical issues I've made and that I'm a better fighter. He, he thinks I could, be, I could go further than Nathan. I should come over and have a go. And I kind of thought myself, I, I, that that would be good and stuff. I was obviously had been following Till's rise, as everyone had at that stage, his mentality and his confidence and his outlook and the sport I was taking in. And obviously Colin and I got a lot of media attention too. There's a couple of wee like uh, UFC connected with the gym and stuff. And I really started to think, fuck, I'd love to go train there. But I was scheduled to fight uh, Rory Lavery. I had lost to Nathan. I knew that my wrestling wasn't good enough and what I was doing wasn't good enough. But then I was scared to fight Rui Lavery and I remember I was travelling, literally going everywhere, going Dublin, going Oma, Belfast, anywhere to get a boxing gym, a jiu-jitsu gym, a jiu-jitsu gym anywhere to get any sort of training. And by the end of the week, I remember clocking up 880 miles. Wow. And I was absolutely wrecked. I just 
basically my recovery was driving and that's not really recovery like I was fucking wrecked and uh, I basically said fuck this I need to somewhere like I can get underneath like all under one roof you know yeah. and that Ali had contacted me and obviously the gym's record speaks themselves so I fought a real average on Saturday night and I was on the cowboy mat on like the Tuesday and I got my eyes open to say the least but then I was good then because I knew I knew well one, one of two things I think there was like I was going to go back to Tyrone, be the fucking big man around Tyrone. People know you. You're the big man in your gym. You can go have that have that life, easier training, or I can go here, dedicate my life to this thing, sleep in the gym, and get my head punched in by these UFC fighters every day. Every day a wee bit less, and then and I chose the latter. And uh, thank God I did now. It's the best decision ever made, you know what I mean? Yeah, because obviously he's brought you to where you are today, and and like that, you see yeah. a lot of fighters that like to be known around their area or this and, and yeah. like are in the gym. But you were in, yeah. talk to us what the first week was like going in, like the difference in intensity training. Like, did you leave the week going, fuck me, this was tough? Lads, there's apparently everyone comes to our gyms, a different intensity. I remember it very well because I'd been on the, sorry, it was the Wednesday night I went and then the, the we, our first session was like a boxing sport and I left that kind of half feeling myself. I was like, fuck, I don't know right there. So sparring with Mike Gunnarsson, I was like, fuck, I don't, I don't well, I don't well there. And then the next day was uh, MMA class. And <laughs> I'll never forget this. So I boxed Mike the night before, like fucking half, he's like, you know, I don't, I don't okay. The next day I came out for an MMA spar, I came out and tried to sit behind a job behind him, boom, d- down, first take down, I'm down. And uh, I swear to God, this is the truth. I looked up to the clock and it was 4.52 and I was like, <laughs> I was in a crucifix. 4.52 on the clock, eight seconds in the round, and I ended the round in a crucifix. That's four minutes for two to get my head absolutely caved in. So uh, a different intensity, lad. It's like literally, it's insane. But it, uh, it's proven, lad. And it, uh, it's why we've got 10 boys UFC. You've competed for a UFC world title. I ran through key drawers, so it's, it's proven, you know what I mean? Yeah, and obviously that is the next logical step. We would have heard by yes. now if you've been signed, but I'm, I'm presuming... That is going to come very soon. Um, you've been quite impressive through your pro career, like it's that. Coming. I I think it's coming. I I think it was Andy <laughs> Hickey who said it. Uh, he he comments on MMA. He said you kind of like to have the rise of McGregor. You've got the brashness to this. He said you're going to do it, and you've done it. So, um, yeah. one of the things, obviously, I think it's seven out of eight your fights you've got finishes. Um, yeah. Up until your last three fights, you were really questioned by a lot of people though with your opponents and stuff. But like you could only fight who was put in front of you. And do you think, yeah. you, like, with those last three performances and what you've done against these very, very, these excellent fighters, do you think that shut a lot of people up? And Or did you even listen to that noise? Uh, lad, I honestly don't, lad. And again, with this sport, like, you're not, in this game, you're not anything until you're proven otherwise, you know what I mean? So I don't even know. If people want to, like, talk a little shit to me, and I've run through cage wars, and now they're like, oh, no, I actually is good. I actually don't even blame you for that because I understand it. You have to, you have to prove yourself in this game, especially when you talk as big as I do. And um, I'll be honest with you, I don't think I've proved anything because I don't think cage wars is that high level. I think it's quite easy. I'm being honest with you, I think cage wars is easy. I think I'm destined for big, 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 big fights. I want to fight Sugar Shane and Team Oval. I want to fight Umar and Amagamel. These are the big fights for me, not fucking... Luke Shanks or fucking Dylan Hazan or Festus. They don't, I never thought of them guys as like, th- these are like potential banana skins. I never, and I listen to see Nathan says I'm going to want to fight him because he's like a high risk. I don't see that even as like a risk. I don't see these guys as even, like, I just don't see them ever surviving. They're never going to, they're ne- they, I, they, I don't think they can like earn, versus, I don't think they can't keep me off them. Do you know what I mean? I'm just going to keep going through them. So, I uh, people, I did obviously shut a lot of people up, but now, now I go to the shows and everybody fucking everybody's real civil to me. Everybody wants to get fucking pictures and stuff, which is cool. I don't I I don't mind if they two years ago they didn't think that because I understand it. I didn't I hadn't beat anybody of any note. I still don't think I have beat anybody notes. I think I need a once you start winning the top fifteen in the UFC, then in my eyes, I'll start to back up what I've been saying. But uh no, I don't blame I don't even give, I don't care a lot if people wanna I don't care if now if you wanna slag me, if you wanna Praise me. It doesn't bother me. I'm still gonna go to the gym tomorrow. I'm still gonna get better. I'm still gonna fight the same. Do you know what I mean? But if people, if you have people with you and against you, it propels your career. And more interesting your face is what you want as a fighter, of course. Yeah, like the Floyd Mayweather, Conor McGregor. 
people want to see yeah. you lose. people want to see you win they're both yeah, paying exactly. money to see to see you fight uh essentially but with the, you talked about obviously the UFC and I seen the interview with you there you you think he matched up quite well against like Sugar Sean O'Malley do you think he's overrated do you think he got he got pushed quite quickly absolutely I I honestly swear on my life I think I'd walk through him right now I think I'd break him in seven minutes eight minutes I don't even think he'd be a hard fight that's the truth I don't think he's hard I actually think his power's over it I think his power's over it I think his striking's very over it I think he's been put in the position that two fights for the belt because he's, he's good on TikTok. I think he literally just, I think he's literally just beat, got beat by Peter Rian in his title fight, or sorry, contender fight. But uh, fair play to him, hey. He's making a lot of dough, and I like watching guys like him who talk big, so fair play to him. But I think Aljo, I favor Aljo in the title fight, do you know what I mean? Yeah, I think Aljo, I think a lot of people disrespect Aljo. I think so like, they, lad. I, but now, not anymore. I fucking, he's earned my respect, to play that much. Yeah, no, I, I think he's fantastic. And I don't know why he was... Yeah. When he was coming up, everyone loved him. And then, obviously, I think with the yeah. knee that time... Which, yeah, yeah, he started crying. <laughs> yeah, and then, obviously, yeah. I think people went against him. But then, whenever people have yeah. gone up against him since, he's proved himself. So, obviously, there's no word on the UFC yet. Is, is there anything in the pipelines in terms of cage warriors? Or is are you adamant that UFC is next for you? Uh, no, uh, we're... For, uh... I was going to go into too much, but there's been some offers and been some discussions with the UFC. Uh, just maybe not right at the moment, but we're definitely, definitely in a good place. Um, for a fighter, what you want is options, and I have options. That's good. Even like if it was still in the UFC, if it was contender series, or if it was back on cage wars, I've got a list of guys that are fucking calling me out every weekend. So. It's 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 good as a fighter to have options, and I definitely have options. But no, lad, I won't fight in the UFC next because I just don't see the point. Like I've literally just beat the best guy in the division. I genuinely I said that going in. Dylan was the internationally acclaimed wrestler. He's the guy who's been competing at world level, undefeated, come in ragged on everybody in cage wars. I genuinely don't think anyone will compete with him, other than me. So I was like, told me to take a step back and beat fight guys you're already proven failures in case yours like is that is, do you honestly think you're going to beat me like seriously like what is the point I don't see the point of me going back but if I have to it's there but I want to fight in the UFC there was that there was that fight with Cameron Simon and there was talks with the with this, this fucking this weekend on the Volkyard only fucking late visas and stuff if that had been Europe who knows how we get on that but now we're in a good place lads Um. Please God, it'll be the UFC next. If it's not, it's not, lad. What, what can you do? Like, you know what I mean? You can't uh, go back to Cage Wars here. And what a fucking privilege to go, go defend my Cage Wars world title in October in the RDS in Dublin. Fucking sold out arena. That would be, that would be unbelievable. Like, you know what I mean? To, if you're going to sit here and be a f- yapping, like, oh, that's not good. Like, of course, that'd be unbelievable. Do you know what I mean? So either way, it's, either way, I'm happy enough. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, no, it is going to be a stack card like the last one. And obviously, Northern Ireland, you've got Reese McKee, Paul Hughes, yourself, Joe McCulgan, obviously, from FIS. Yeah, yeah. Um, Crazy, isn't it? It's mad how this small area at the top Crazy. of the country is, is yeah. doing so well. Like, like what yeah, do you yeah. put it down to? What's in the water up there? What's happening? <laughs> uh, it's like, because me, Reese, and Paul are like maybe 35 miles apart, and that's 50% of the cage water's belt. It's fucking, that's insane. Uh, I think yeah, yeah, absolutely have to put it down to the rise of Conor McGregor 10 years ago of course that inspired everybody anyone who says otherwise is just full of shit of course it did it was always going to take time for that like whenever he got into the UFC there's obviously some guys followed him they probably weren't that high of level it was, it was always going to take time for like that to filter through like boys were, whenever I was in school and McGregor was like Mendes I'll never forget them days whenever I was in school not sure we all went in them mediums and then 10 years later now we're all Cage Wars champions on the verge of the UFC. And I just, I was saying, I just went to Ur with Tiernan. And uh, I, want, I I don't talk shit. Like, I, I didn't think they were good. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say they're good. But it was honestly, the, I'd say, not overall, like, high-level matchups, but in every fight, there was one good fighter, at least. And I'd say there was about seven to eight. Very, very high-level. I'd say, honestly, it was the highest-level amateur card I've seen in Ireland in a while. It was seven, eight very, very good fighters. So, Please, here, hopefully, just keep, I'd imagine it will just keep going, you know what I mean? Yeah, no, and he did say that to me before, so it's 100% true. Um, yeah, about yeah. your fighting championship. It was like that. Um, I speak to amateur fighters as well, and that's it. Like you said, 
when he kind of came through, there wouldn't have been the technique there is now, the evolution. Of course. Of like, course. Also, you see you coming through and the hammers like Tiernan and your Max Lally, <laughs> Connor McCarthy's like, the level yeah. of are scary coming through. When you look at what's coming behind, do you think there's going to be a lot more Irish fighters in the UFC with yourself when you eventually get there? Absolutely, absolutely. Um, uh, hopefully not, because uh, well, uh, hopefully Ian can now take it back, and we can all get in. That's that would be ideal. And then down the line, maybe I go back and there's like three or four lads underneath me. You know what I mean? So uh, no, absolutely. That's how it, that's how this thing goes, and that one guy who comes back and everyone gets in, and it just keeps growing. I think oh, obviously you had the McGregor thing. That was obviously mad, but it was one guy. I think. Like, I genuinely, Ian's already in top, what was he now? But I think he's going to beat Jeff Neal. Like, we probably will go in the top 10. I expect Paul Hughes to be very, very, very competitive with the high level guys very soon, as soon as he's in. I know I'm going to be. I fucking know I'm going to be. So, of course, that's going to inspire. Like, imagine the three of us in the yard in fucking Vegas. That'd be fucking insane. That'd be nuts. <laughs> imagine. And be, obviously, there's Sean O'Bannon all there too. Like, a fucking course. Just, yeah, Shauna. Yeah, Sean Bannon. She's actually fighting on the the London card. She got signed and got a fight quite quickly, which is as well for for women's MMA in Ireland, which is starting to ramp up as well. That's only good for for the yeah. sport as well. So there's there's yeah. quite a good few good names that I think are going to get there. Like like said, the main three that we said you your, yourself, Paul, and Reese. Obviously, Sean is there. There's a couple of lads knocking around that could in the next one or two of maybe get there as well. Um, Hopefully. But yeah, I think they're due a Dublin card. It's been a while since they've been back. Um, it's been a it's been a long time, and I think something like that gives an opportunity for fighters to get like a one fight sort of a deal thing. Because when Connor came back, that's no, what... it's it's literally the difference because like there's more to it than I knew. They've not got, obviously I can't talk, but like it's not just a case of getting on like, like these visas and these late notice things. If you're in America on a late notice. Like if a fight pulls out in three weeks, it's a lot handier for the UFC to bring up a guy in America on that yard than to fly a guy over from Ireland, get him a working visa and all this shit. Do you know what I mean? It's more to it than just fucking getting signed. But if there's a naturally a lot of shows in Europe, because obviously a Paris yard, if there's shows in Ireland, it's definitely better for the local guys. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, hundred percent. Hopefully that does happen. We can like that. You can get loads of guys onto the card, and then obviously yeah. they can see see the work there. Because I think like that, I. I don't fight, I've never fought, but looking at the level here, even from like the late amateurs, like the likes of Tieran and stuff, I reckon they go into yeah. most countries early level, like and beat the early uh, pros, like the, the early yeah. level pros. So, um, so no rush. No rush. yeah, so we'll get there eventually. So, um, I'm gonna let you go. I want to thank you very much for joining me. It's been a pleasure. I love your style, I love your talk, and I, I love how when people were against you, you just kept doing your thing and then eventually, <laughs> eventually proved it. Like that, people don't see the work you put in. I'm really looking forward to this documentary. So when it's released, let me know. I'll share or whatever. Is there anything you want to say before you go? Or anyone you want to give a shout out to? Oh, fuck. I'll forget all my sponsor now, lad. Uh, have some in front of me. Ben Burr <laughs> Construction, main sponsor for me and Tiernan. That prize guy who sponsored me, Reese and Paul, fucking the whole of fucking Irish and maybe lots of things. All the Sam Fan boys, Concordia Clinic, and... TMC out in California. See, without these boys, you couldn't fucking do this. But after winning that belt, the support I've got from Irishmen near and afar has been unbelievable. So, big shout out to them. And I'm a team, obviously, Carmel. <laughs> Perfect. I want to thank you so much for your time. It's been an absolute pleasure. Hopefully, we see you in the next fight. You'll see. If not, it's going to be better for because we're going to see you in Dublin. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, that, like, we're, if it's bad news for you, it's good news for us. If it's good news for you, it's bad news for us. <laughs> but hopefully, it's the UFC. Oh. Um, I want to thank you so much. It's been an absolute pleasure. Anytime, lad.